Look at this beautiful garden and let's add custom flowers to Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Alright, we found some back into the ones more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding custom flowers to Minecraft, including how to add it to a flower pot. This is the, well, basically the thing a lot of people might struggle with, but no worries at all, we'll get through this. So first and foremost, we need to add both the flower as a block, as well as the potted flower. So for this, we're just going to take over here, let's say the door, that's going to be fine. And this is going to be the cat mint. Now this is going to be the actual flower, and this needs the register block method call over here, because we also need a block item for this. So this is going to be the cat mint, and this is going to be a flower block here in this case. First parameter of which is going to be a mob effect, specifically a supplier of a mob effect. So this is going to be, let's say, mob effect start luck. Then we have the effect duration. That's going to be, let's say, something like five. I think that's okay. This should be in seconds, if I recall correctly. And then no block set type over here needed. For the copying, we should copy a flower. We're just going to use the allium over here. I don't think the amethyst sound would quite work over here. And we also want to call no occlusion as well as no collision. And once we have that, what we can do is we can duplicate this. And this is then going to be the potted catment. This one needs block start register over here. Very important that we change this because when you think about it, the way that you make a potted block is you set the pot down and then you right click it with a flower. Therefore, we don't want an actual item of this to be generated as well. And then this is a flower pot block over here with some different parameters. The first parameter with the first parameter of which being the flower pot. So this is going to be blocks that flower plot. And then we're going to cast that the blocks that flower pot right here into a flower pot block. There you go. And the second parameter is actually referring back to our cat mint over here. So this is going to be referring back to the flower that is inside of it. And of course, let's not forget to change the name right here. Potted underscore cat mint. And then this should be the potted allium. I think that that's okay. This is also have no collision. I am unsure if this is the case. It is not. So let's remove the no collision. So we actually do have collision. And this is basically what we need. So every time you add a flower, you want the flower as well as then the potted version of that flower. Let's add those to the creative mode tab or rather add the flower to the creative mode tab. Otherwise, I might actually forget that. That's going to be the catmint over here. And then we can add the translation and all of the textures as well. There you go. That's going to be the catmint. And I say all of the textures. To be honest, it is only one texture. We only need the catmint over here in the block textures folder, of course. The rest is then all handled via the data gen. But before we can go to the data gen, first of all, we need to somehow make it so then you have, when you have the flower in your hand, you right click a pot, you actually add that to the flower pot. To do this, we want to go to the common setup event. If you don't have this, take a look at this. You need the common setup event. That's going to be the FML common setup event right here, as well as this added to the listener over here. If you don't have this, then it's not going to work. So if it is grayed out, then you need to add this to your tutorial mod constructor over here. Shouldn't be anything too crazy. And then we want to call event.inqwork. This is going to be a runnable over here. And inside of this runnable, we want to say blocks.flowerpot.cast. We're going to cast this to the flower pot block over here. At the end over here, we're going to say add plant. We're going to add modblocks.catmint.getID. And then we'll say modblocks.potedcatmint. And that is going to be all we need. You have to do this for every one of your different plants that you want to add to a flower pot, but that is all that we need to do here. And now the rest is just data gen. Let's start with the loot. The loot is a fairly straightforward, so I will just copy over this as it's really not that complicated. You can see the catmint just drops itself while the potted catmint well, creates a pot item table with the catmint in there as well. Nothing too crazy over here, so the loot table's pretty straightforward. For the block states, it's a little more complicated. Once again, all of the code is available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. And you can see we're basically calling the simple block with item, passing in the catmint over here, and then using the cross model with the catmint texture, and also adding the render type cutout. Very important, because of course the actual flower has alpha values in the, in the in the texture so that is why the cutout here is important and then for the potted one we you can see instead of calling the cross we're calling the single texture uh, this is because we have to specify the plant texture key for some reason 
It just is what it is, but that is basically going to create both of them perfectly exactly how we want. The only thing that's not created is the proper item, but we can add that individually. And the way that we add this is we actually want to go down again here to the simple block item, right? And we want to duplicate this. And there's going to be the block item block texture. Now, why am I making another one? Well, because instead of in the item folder, right, we've added this in the block folder. So I'm going to change this to block over here and then use this particular method to register the the item model for the block. So this is going to be the simple block item with block texture mod blocks dot catmint. There you go. Once again, sadly has to be a custom method, but you know, overall, it's not that difficult. It's not that complicated. So you should be good to go. And those are actually all of the steps that we need. So let's actually run the data over here. And then after this has run through, we can jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the custom flower has been added to Minecraft. And let's actually set it down in the world because that, of course, also works. You can see, beautiful. Let's make a little bit of a garden over here. Look at this beauty. That is awesome. There we go. And of course, when I add it to a flower pot, there we go. Absolutely no worries. Works totally fine. And if I go to survival mode, number one, I can get the catmint from the normal catmint as well as when I break the flower pot. So everything working, and that is how easy it can be to add some custom flowers to Minecraft. And that's it for this tutorial right here. In this one, in the next tutorial right here, we're going to add custom villager trades as well as trades to wandering traders. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.